But he was only partial Vulcan because he had to strap his fingers together to do the Vulcan sign. Yeah. Which, which I can do, as I'm a Vulcan. And um, anyone can do the Vulcan sign. You do it. Go on then. Yeah. Mm. Ooh. Can you, can you do it on both hands? <laughs> can you do it on third hand? <laughs> you did a rally for Kinnock, I gather. I did. I helped Neil to battle to failure. <laughs> <laughs> Was this the Notorious Sheffield rally? No, I didn't do that one. That was a big mistake. Do you it, drive you... or do you navigate? <laughs> <laughs> if they had used me in Sheffield, it would have been much more minimal. Mm, yes. Happy days. <laughs> well, I'm glad we got that clear. Yeah, yeah. well, sure, sure. Yeah. OK, we'll come back to you later. I don't know why you brought it up. So that's, that's all I am. I, aren't you on my side? I mean, aren't we on each other's side? <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> <laughs> No, of course we are, Richard. No, Showbiz can't, pals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're not quite a lovey, though, are you, Ian? It's the nicest thing anyone's ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul and Eddie, at long last. Uh, who's on their last legs here? The VT operator? Oh, there we are. Um, I don't know where it is. I'd be interested to know where it is now. Well, it's sitting in this fjord. Right, thank you. It is, yes, it's in Norway. Why can't they just drink it? Hmm. <laughs> well, the have platform. A, yeah. No, the, the dung. The, the oil. Yeah, have a party. Yeah. Mm. Mix it with some orange juice. End of a party, nobody knows what they're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> a tequila um, sludge. Hmm. <laughs> Good work. That sounds like Duckham it. surprise. <laughs> It is the fate of the Brent Spa oil rig and the government's embarrassment over a dramatic U-turn by Shell following protests uh, by Greenpeace uh, for, week, for, uh, for weeks. John Major and what Shell. What was that bit? Sorry, I missed that bit. <laughs> <laughs> why are we, are we doing uh, snake impressions? <laughs> <laughs> you say, well, it's a quiz. Suddenly, it's a wildlife document. <laughs> yes, it. Uh, he said it for weeks for hula. <laughs> <laughs> It's all went, oh, no, 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 like that. Well, well you're Norwegian, near it, you can hear it it's better. It's Urdu. The Norwegian field. <laughs> They're hoping to sell the video in Norway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. No, it's not. It's bollocks. It's, um, <laughs> four wheels and a blowjob. Well, it, it, it's... This is a new service that the Automobile Association... <laughs> Um, it's, it's Hugh Grant and all those jokes that everybody's done since about him um, uh, paying the woman called Denise Brown to have uh, sex up the boulevard. <laughs> yeah. just, uh, just in case Denise Brown is watching, it was Divine Brown. <laughs> um. I didn't realise you knew her personally. <laughs> And that she I was think, that good. Uh, think, yeah, <laughs> you might get to know Denise Brown quite quickly. Mm. Exactly when it was that. Uh, 1947. Mm. Mexico. Uh, it's correct. It's uh, actually Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> and it's actually 1947. <laughs> but why it would be Japanese, I've no idea. Right. <laughs> Perhaps you could tell me. Uh, you seem to know a lot of these answers. Uh, <laughs> Interestingly, I haven't got Who won the cup final in 1948? Uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers. No, Manchester United. Is it really? You're meant to be a Man United fan. Yeah. So also make you. Wolverhampton Wanderers. <laughs> Forget They beat Blackpool. 4-2. Mm. You scored? know nothing. Who scored? scored? Well, it was funny enough, an alien came down and nodded one in at the far post. <laughs> Uh, according to professors at uh, Indiana University, people abducted by aliens go through six distinct stages. Capture six what stages? Distinct stages. Yes, it's funny that's the one word I couldn't hear. Distinct. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> six. Uh, six. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, What's this they... for people watching it on fast forward or something? <laughs> uh, they go through six separate stages. <laughs> Obviously, Sangria. Again, it's not bad at all. You've got plenty of sunshine around, but a little bit more in the way of cloud and things like that. And we could have a little problem here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to cope with this. Right. I can't expect it. Over the southern part of the I'll come I'll say bye-bye. Do you want the clipboard? Is Eric Cantor? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. And in the end, he gets dragged off by the Rosers. <laughs> <laughs> but why is he covering yes. his bits? Cover, I mean, you don't go take your clothes off, don't get out there, go on telly and say I'm yeah. naked, and then cover your bits. He, they might, go, yeah. I think he, he might be, be forced to. <laughs> I think that might have been colder than he thought. Have you got any idea? Um, <laughs> <laughs> his 
his bits went westwards. Um, <laughs> have you any idea who, uh, what programme that was? Yeah, it was Joe Richard and Judy. Mm. Mm. Was the right answer. And who was the uh, weatherman? Fred Talbot. Mm. In... Oh, that's sad. <laughs> <laughs> that yes, you don't know. I think no, that you uh, do know. Shows what uh, Paul does during the day. Um, yes, it is. Well done. It is the uh, rude interruption to Granada's This Morning Show when serious Two points for not having a life. <laughs> he's, uh, oh, he's no, it's two fair. points for knowing everything in the world. Mm. <laughs> Which, to my mind, is quite good in a quiz you show. Can't, they can... mm. <laughs> Having established that's uh, what we're doing. It is a useful attribute. Yeah. Why does he do it? Uh, Mark Roberts. Yeah. Uh, we don't know. We haven't talked to him about it, unfortunately. Do you want that's... me to ring him? Yeah. If it was Noel's house party, you'd ring him now. Yeah, you, you would. <laughs> 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 or, you'd, or you'd say... Or you'd say, well, he's here tonight, yeah. and he'd just run across like that. And you'd have a camera in, in his bedroom, and he'd be yeah. fully clothed. Mm. We can't afford surprise guests on this show, unfortunately. Paul, your um, four women on top are Anna Ford, Carol Thatcher, Paula Miss Whiplash Strudwick, and Jermaine Greer. Is that a passport photo? <laughs> Could I it be then that because Anna Ford had a glass of wine thrown over by Jonathan Aitken, so will that be somewhere in there, Jonathan Aitken? Oi! <laughs> you a victim of aggressive hair doing? Aggressive? What was that word you used? What have you done to yourself, boy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me a surprise guest. <laughs> I'm glad you got this round first. Yeah, so am I. Mm. Well, we'd have been Why in trouble if the one on the left tried system? talking. <laughs> <laughs> the next question, Eddie, is uh, your four institutions are the Queen. Oh, to be careful what you say, she'll come round. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say um, that? We're all annoyed with the French. Oh. Oh, can, can well, the in person in the game win the game? <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be a first, I have to say. Well, this programme has never been one to poo-poo other quiz shows, and if other programmes come up with new and original ideas, then we're only too happy uh, to steal them. And uh, so it is, with uh, this traditional sense of fair uh, plagiarism uh, very much in mind, that we present our own version of Mastermind, featuring the same rules, uh, the same format, and the same spotlight. And our uh, first contestant is Mr. Ian David Hislop, who is a magazine salesman from Clapham. <laughs> and uh, your specialist subject is... The life and fibs of Geoffrey Archer. <laughs> your questions on the life and fibs of Geoffrey Archer start now. What is an archer and where does the term originate? £2,000. It came from a, a brown envelope full of money he gave to a prostitute he'd never met before to try and get her to go abroad. Correct. To whom did Archer say it was really like a breath of spring to meet you? The late Robert Maxwell. Takes one to no one. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. After awarding Kathleen Burnett first prize in a short story competition, what did Archer do? Steal the story and pretend it was his own in the next collection. Uh, almost right. He included her storyline in his own collection, A Twist in the Tale. What false claim did Archer make about winning the Louth by-election? He said he was the youngest MP ever in the House of Commons, which he wasn't. He was the fourth. He, he was, in fact, the fourth youngest, correct. By walking out onto a bridge in Toronto, what trouble did Archer walk into? Uh, he took three suits from the shop with him. He was arrested on suspicion of shoplifting, yes. <laughs> uh, which post, which never existed, did Archer claim his father had held? Um, he said his father was a, a, a colonel in the Somerset Light Infantry. He'd won a Distinguished Conduct Medal. Um, which he hadn't, and he said his father was also consul of Singapore, which he, he wasn't. Uh, whereas his father, in fact, was a caterer in Brighton and a bigamist. <laughs> uh, what was special about the £57 million pounds Archer claimed to have raised for Kurdistan through his Simple Truth concert? Well, he didn't raise 57 he raised about seven, I think. Correct. On his visit to Kurdistan, how did Archer greet the assembled crowd? Um, he tried to do a bit of Kurdish and he said, Bastard Kurdistan. Is correct. Uh, <laughs> before buying what, did Archer famously not talk to his wife? Um, Anglia shares, correct. just as the company was about to be taken over. During an athletics race at Oxford in October 1963, what achievement propelled Archer into the national press? He was hit by a discus. <laughs> Amusingly. And stretched off uh, whilst competitors cheered. <laughs> Uh, how precisely did Monica Coughlin... I've finished, so I'll start with the next contestant. 
who is a Mr. Paul James Merton, a former civil servant from Tooting. Your specialist subject, Mr. Merton, is? Uh, the absurd revelations in the tabloid press between 1990 and 1995. Uh, your questions on the absurd revelations in the tabloid press between 1990 and 1995 start now. What was fired at an Airbus A340 at 500 miles an hour to test its durability? Frozen chicken. Is correct. <laughs> Who repeatedly dialed police in West Virginia? East Virginia. <laughs> A tomato plant oh. is the right answer. How did the Irish Territorial Army in County Wicklow compensate for having no bullets? Uh, uh, shouting bang. They shouted bang when they fired. <laughs> the Amazonian blue-fronted parrot killed in Oxford by an irate Mark Leach had annoyed him by repeatedly saying what? Uh, Mark Leach, his name, Mark Leach. Is Mark correct. Leach. Yeah. Uh, what did coach uh, Randy Brown offer his American football team as an incentive to play better? His wife. Sex with his wife. <laughs> what was uh, Don Snellgrove of the US Air Force doing that caused him to crash his 12, pound, uh, 12 million pound plane over Iraq? He was having a shit into a teapot. <laughs> Uh, I can't give you that. He was trying to piss into a sponge. And... <laughs> uh, Which is dessert. What... <laughs> what crime did Colin Sad commit? Uh, he was trying to have a shit into a teapot. <laughs> and then he stole people's cars and cleaned them and bought them back and then disappeared. He stole people's cars, washed them, polished them and returned them to their owners. Uh, John Bloor superglued his buttocks together because he mistook the glue for what? Nesquik. <laughs> his hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> What was odd about the gorilla that a group of Mexicans attempted to smuggle out of Miami? Uh, it was a gorilla in a, in a man suit disguised as a gorilla. <laughs> it was a man in a gorilla suit. It was an undercover government agent in a gorilla suit. <laughs> what piece of music does a musical condom play when it splits? Um, I, I used to love you, but it's all over now. <laughs> um, yes, yes, sir, that's my baby. <laughs> Beethoven. I've started, so I'll finish. Is, uh, is the right answer. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why were Paul Osborne's racing pigeons so successful? They had bikes. <laughs> <laughs> he fed them on cannabis. Oh. Is the right answer. But they had bikes as well. Did they? Yes. And that concludes our brave, <laughs> if ultimately misguided, attempt at our mastermind round, which brings the present score to. Uh, uh, undreamed of heights because uh, Paul and Eddie are now under dizzy uh, 23, whilst Ian and Richard are virtually suffering from vertigo with 24. <laughs> and finally, what no hina tu? Oh, I know, it's Dao Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's, what does it mean, Eddie? What does Dao Ho mean? It means I hope it gets a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Is it how to put together a rally bicycle instruction booklet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last bit looks like, like a ski lift, doesn't yeah. it? That last... How to put a ski lift together at home. A ski, a ski lift and a shower on top. Yeah. <laughs> and a large balloon with a sort of pointy stick. Mm. The second bit is man playing golf, no slash down with trio. <laughs> <laughs> and the first one's just a yoga position for people on the advanced course. <laughs> I think we've got a whole new game here. Um, <laughs> the answer is, in fact, Poussin uh, as... Uh, what? What? <laughs> it's not Dao Ho, is it? It's no, Poussin. No, it's Poussin. <laughs> the, the second bit means is alive and well. No, it means uh, the secret of. The Did they of start poo. that sentence very simply of? and just get more complicated as time went on? At the beginning, he was just trying to see if the pen worked properly. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, the edge of basin minus... Five going over. <laughs> Yoga position. Hockey sticks with man in forest goes up ski like <laughs> My final look at the final scores reveals that tonight's useless gits are Paul and Eddie with 26, whereas tonight's smug bastards are Ian and Richard with 29. <laughs> People will buy this video just to see Ian win. <laughs> it is astonishing, yes, that he didn't even notice the six million pounds which had, uh, which had gone missing. Oh, come uh, on, Angus, you got that much in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> just I wondered couple. what it was. so did I. You've got okay, any loose just, change uh, by the look of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like someone else. <laughs> Met this bloke when she was 14, ended up thinking he was smelly. What are you talking about? <laughs>
Uh, are you having a slight at me? No. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. no. go at you. We're not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's you see, having a go, you see, like the Americans pronounce Van Gogh Van Gogh. Mm. I mean, what's the matter with them? Can't they see the U-G-H at the end? <laughs> but then I mean, you don't say Frank Bow, do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a co at the back of my throat. <laughs> Unless you're married to Sebastian Coe, of mm. course. <laughs> Yes, do you remember her name? Yes, I do. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Maria something. Um, Maria, how's that spelt, Paul? G-O-R-E, is it? <laughs> you see, you've got mental. <laughs> You're sitting there in a world yes. of your own. <laughs> like some elderly actor who once appeared in Crossroads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, uh, that'd be with mustard, would it? <laughs> Yapping away. What's the matter with you? I'm sorry. The secret of eternal youth, according to the French, uh, is a lot of physical exercise and not much work. That's what they say. You're looking well, Paula. <laughs> it's, uh... That's someone having a goff at her. <laughs> <laughs> or making a slight. Yes, exactly. Or a slight goff. Um, it is... Everybody's everybody gone mad. <laughs> about tonight because I'm doing the I'm doing the Clive Anderson's Anderson. <laughs> I'm doing it now yeah. <laughs> I yeah. can't hang about I've got to do Clive's show at half ten on channel four. Oh right so at the end of this I've got to go who else is on I don't know just in case I haven't so. got there yet <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it breast implants oh well that's very gentlemanly <laughs> <laughs> that's really nice you could have said it was like Gaza me and her had all dyed our hair. Yeah. But he would have been wrong, though, wouldn't he? <laughs> but he would have been more of a gentleman. Mm-hmm. Yes, but he would have oh, been... It's a big quiz. secret, though, isn't it? Your breast in <laughs> Um... Well, I mean, you certainly kept that... it quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was straight on the phone to somebody with a greasy shirt in Wapping saying, please discuss my breasts with the nation. And can you buy the rights of my book? Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's terrible, bloody media intrusion. Look, the camera's here, Paula. <laughs> she was invited yeah. on this show. Please stop being unkind. <laughs> Don't be unkind. He's professionally Shall obliged I stop to being be. unkind. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's only one way to sort this out. If you want Ian to stop being unkind, phone 098. <laughs> I am a bit worried, because apparently you're... Your current bow sort of beats people up, doesn't he? He sometimes gets a bit cross. <laughs> and if the photographers come in and they're from the wrong organisation and you haven't sold the pictures to them? Well, we both punch them, yes. You both punch them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there we go. Fair enough. Two black eyes next week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's nothing wrong with physical violence. Who's going to have two face? black eyes next week? You are. You? You're not going jogging, are you? <laughs> something to do with the fact that the, um, they all dye their hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she must be the odd one out, the one at the right top, because she's the only one who hasn't been seen... Um, how do I put this? However you put it, it is, uh, it is the wrong answer. Um, <laughs> It is, it is, all of them are the proud owners of plastic breasts, with the exception of the late oil billionaire J. Howard Marshall II, who didn't own any, uh, unless you count the pair that came free with his wife. <laughs> um, uh, Paula here had, uh, had a breast enlargement operation at the beginning of her relationship with Michael Hutchins. Oh, she, honestly, um, Angus, how can you say that? Just, just sitting, sitting there the talking oh, the right. truth. <laughs> We don't know what the truth is. We don't know what the truth is. It's all in the book. How do you know? You mean the book's rubbish? Well, I know that, but I mean. Once again, knowing how to judge an audience. Once again, knowing how to woo a woman into submission. No, I gather it took you six days to write this book. You get writer's block or something. One more thing, he's going to hit you. No, I will at all. I'll take great pleasure in thumping my fist into that great face of yours. <laughs> <laughs> it was around the beginning of the tenth century. The great that wit of the twentieth century. <laughs> Uh, so, Paula, uh, put us right then. Uh, is that all wrong? Did you not have breast enlargement operation at the beginning of your relationship with Michael? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so much for 
the sisterhood. <laughs> do you, when you go along, do they give you a, like a wallpaper chart? So much chart? for sisterhood. <laughs> Not the woman just said yes. Is that you what get... you said to Helena Christiansen? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it! <laughs> Who's Helen? Who's Helen the Christensen? You can always resort to physical violence after the show. <laughs> CBC, when yeah. you go along, do you get like a wallpaper chart book and you say, well, I'll have one of those. <laughs> yeah. no, that, looks, that look quite good with a sideboard, actually. I might do that. Do you really want to know? Or do you take a bowler out along and say, can you give us two of those? <laughs> Yeah. And there's millions of bosoms. Yeah. And you say, I'll have those. Really? Yeah. Good. Well, thank you for putting it straight on that one, Paul. No, anyway. I feel free. I really despise you now. Mm. <laughs> We've despised him from everything. <laughs> Don't even look at me. <laughs> <laughs> you Are sperm sorry? of the devil. <laughs> and he. The reason that he is there is because he suddenly had this miracle Sperm where he was drinking. The devil. He was. He was drinking Even milk. Even your insults and it was emanate a from it the was genitals. A miracle because he was <laughs> it was drink. Are you listening, no. Angus? Are you listening? Is it um, there is someone who's trying to answer the question. question. And he's yes, teaching no, his grandmother to suck eggs. Yeah. Right, right. Gabriella like Sabatini. A sucked egg. <laughs> Yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh. Right. Well, any ideas, sperm of the devil? <laughs> I think this has probably got something to do with ears, or am I way off the mark? <laughs> well, um, you know the thing about this, 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 this. I mean, it's terrible, really. I mean, sort of growing this ear on this mouse. But in about twenty <coughs> years' time, you can say, well, you'll, you'll go to the doctor and say, well, I'll have the tongue of an ant eater, <laughs> and they'll put it, just put it in. Why would you want one? <laughs> oh, you can read the newspapers and clean the windows at the same time. <laughs> Or if your wife's upstairs waiting for you and you're downstairs watching Match of the Day. <laughs> every time you shout goal, she's more than happy. Uh, next, what equals V0 minus V infinity over V0 plus 1 minus rho 0 over rho P? V rho pi. Hang on a minute! <laughs> He's not liable to get it right, is he? <laughs> no, well, we should be able to work it out. All the information's there. <laughs> Uh, which, all of which blind why, panic. Why, 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 why are you... Could you boring? say why again, Paul? <laughs> you said that you're rating right to points of view. <laughs> yes. Why, 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 Have you why, seen why, her why, wink why. on points of view lately, Anne Robinson? Is that her name? It's sort of turned into this curious sort of like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like she's had a stroke. <laughs> oh, what does a woman think she's doing? I think there's a bloke down here pulling it with a bit of thread. <laughs> I watched it the other night. I thought that, woman, that woman's on something. Mm. I decided it was BBC One. <laughs> Just watch her next week, points of view, to say, and for those of you who miss Johnny Morris, here he is again. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I think she sort of thinks people at home go, ah, oh, isn't she gorgeous? <laughs> the way she closes yeah, her eyes in seven separate stages. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody did that to you on the bus, you'd clock them, wouldn't you? <laughs> In my chest from yes. laughing. Oh dear, don't burst. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bloke over there going to go home with a couple of earmuffs if you do. <laughs> you can be rude about the royal family, but not horses, that's <laughs> right. Or Paul Eight. Or Paula. Yes, quite right. Just remember She's that. our guest. Um, but uh, before, before we return. Not retire, that you'd know it. No. Well, yes, Anne Robinson was no, our guest once upon a time. It's just yeah. desserts later. Mm. Oh, hello. Ooh. Ooh. Here we go. Um, I'll get my dessert later. Just desserts. Oh, just desserts. Just desserts. You're not getting a mean chorus. <laughs> All right. Do you, you want, want to go to the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the Prime Minister? <laughs> well, I think this is, uh, is this um, McDonald's? Is this things that have uh, been found in kitchens? Uh, the McDonald's inventing a new uh, cheeseburger that's got the back legs of a mouse. You order it, it comes walking towards you. <laughs> and in a few years' time, it'll have a little voice box in it, so it'll speak to you as you're eating it. Been drinking coffee, have we, sir? <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's.
Donalds are notoriously litigious. They I know. I, 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 I have posed this as a question rather than a statement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's things found, isn't it? Um, yes, I have, to, I have to own up. You are absolutely right. As we see them again, uh, they have all allegedly been found in McDonald's food, uh, <laughs> except... Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, is there a beef burger there? There isn't, is there? <laughs> I'd, I'd remember that one on the bottom left. I mean, it's, it's nibbling the lettuce. Um, well, I don't know. Um, the back legs of a mouse. Uh, Ian, you want to have a try? I must be the, you know, the, <laughs> the Jeffrey Archer. <laughs> the raw sewage. Um, yes, is the right answer. So you'll have to share the points. What's the press trousers mm. policy? Press his trousers. Press his trousers. <laughs> He, he may well have done, Ian, but that's not the answer. No, uh, Portillo pressed on seabed bombs, uh, which were found in... what I said. Hmm. Wait. No, I didn't. No. <laughs> I think you can use it with trousers. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> often done. I often get up in the morning and put on those seabed bombs. <laughs> It's is it uh, late? It is late, late. Um, and uh, the person was uh, Newt Gingrich, which I think Ian says I'll give you one each, uh, which... Uh, what? <laughs> you obviously know it's Newt Gingrich. It's not a bloody Newt that's been invited. <laughs> Where is this pond? It's the other side of the road. It'll take ages to get here. <laughs> Um, Mrs. Tice has got some funny friends. She might have a new hanging around. <laughs> so what, is, uh, what does he do, Newt Gingrich? Well, he's now... Uh, well, yeah. Another point to end? Well done. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> click on this game, Paul. Um, so how does that work? Is that new new rule, then, you yeah. should be aware of? Yeah, it is. Do I get the yeah, feeling you're a touch myth, do you? <laughs> <laughs> As we were about five points behind before we went into the last round, we did very well to end up with one you, point behind you did, the last yeah. question and uh, get the last question right. So I was assuming that we had sort of pulled off a, a victory mm. from the jaws of defeat. But and yet, no, we it? hadn't at yeah. all. Yeah. Um, isn't Julia Somerville the, uh, the person that Ian looks like? What does it look like? Jimmy. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> Jimmy. Although now you yeah, say yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, both teams have to nominate one person to do an impression of that celebrity. <laughs> and, um, and points for whichever one is uh, the better will then be in my gift. Uh, obviously, uh, with a top professional impressionist on the panel in the shape of Ian Hislop. Um, <laughs> it's going to be pretty one-sided. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Harold Wilson. Um, Paul, who are you nominating? Um, um, to, uh, I'll to do this help. one. <laughs> We need the points. Yeah. <laughs> it's a um, controversial uh, decision. Uh, Paul, let's They're going to be quite off. short, can't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. Well, I think as I said at the Brighton Conference in 1960. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Harold Wilson was Welsh. <laughs> No, it was uh, positively... Uh, <laughs> no, no, that was very good, very good. Yeah, this is the same that he says himself, really, isn't it? Yeah. Uh... Why do I feel my career has ended? <laughs> and astonishingly, it's another voice from yesteryear, Eddie Waring, the, uh, the late, great rugby league commentator. Paul, who are you going to nominate uh, this time? Mr. Yarwood, I'm sure. <laughs> ah, well, you see, now, we used to commentate on the rugby up in our hour park. <laughs> Endless and oh, uh, and I'll tell you. Uh, uh, Ian, what about your team? Um, I'm nominating Melvin again. <laughs> just, uh, just do the same as you did. No, <laughs> uh, can you just give us a hint? <laughs> <laughs> Incredibly, the random selection is 70s heartthrob Melvin Bragg. <laughs> so, uh, Paul, who are you going to nominate? Who's going to happen? Oh, I'll have a go at it. All <laughs> oh, right, so it's Paul Merton. Ian? During the days when he sounded like Howard Wilson. <laughs> 
who are you going to choose, Ian? Oh. Um, I'm going to nominate Melvin. <laughs> Paul? I can't do it at all. Neither can Melvin. No. <laughs> <laughs> On the South Bank show this evening. <laughs> George Harrison. <laughs> okay, do George Harrison instead. Well, the thing about the Beatles was... Uh, <laughs> Jesus. The reason that, that... why we were called the Beatles, <laughs> because that was the name we thought of at the time. <laughs> That's Lily <laughs> Savage. <laughs> One person who comes from Liverpool. <laughs> I can do a very good Alec Guinness. In the Liverpool constituency. Yes, uh, how does it go? Alec Guinness, in, the, in Kind Hearts and Coronets, is the old priest. Mm. When Dennis Price is walking around, and he's the old priest showing him around the church, and he says, um, The view from my west window <laughs> has all the exuberance of Charles and none of the concomitant crudities of the period. <laughs> Julian. Thank you. Julian Clary. Yes, I'm sure you can. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Melvin, would you like to try Melvin Bragg? Yeah, it goes something like this. That's uh, fine, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not easy to do yourself, that's very good. Mm. Unless you're very lonely. <laughs> Yes, out of all those it could have chosen, it's the familiar face of popster Jimmy Somerville. Uh, Ian. Uh, Don't leave me this way. <laughs> time again. <laughs> Michael Caine attended Hackney Downs and his first ever words on stage were in a school nativity play, My Name's Virgin Mary. <laughs> oh, 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 hang on, was that a nearly an impression? Dangerously close. It was no, not dangerously close, dangerously far away. <laughs> yeah. No, go on, then. Everybody else is out to do it. What's that then? Michael Caine. I've just done him. No, you haven't. <laughs> You've done a vague approximation of some sort of Cockney accent you might have heard on a bus somewhere when you, <laughs> when you didn't have any money. But let's have, right. let's have Michael Caine. Right. My name's Michael Caine. <laughs> it might be more impressive if the floor manager didn't have to start the applause. In the <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Parker Bowles, I'm doing this operation. <laughs> Have you heard the joke about the new Disney film that's got Will Carling in it? It's called Pooky Highness. <laughs> Graham Taylor's just been sacked from... Oh, no, he's not been sacked. He's left. He's left. He's, they Graham had a bad Taylor. draw against Charlton, nil-nil, and he went. Uh, yes. But so um, that's a big story, is it? In the football world, it's pretty enormous. In, uh, <laughs> bloke resigns after nil all draw. Yeah, yeah but oh it's, God, it's a great sport, isn't it? <laughs> you like cricket, don't you, Ian? I do, mm. actually, mm. Paul. Mm. Yes, I do. Yes. Doesn't Any like problems? Football. No, no, I'm just making, making conversations. <laughs> you, like, no, no, you don't like football because it's boring, but you like cricket. Yeah. <laughs> There's a shortage of geese, apparently, this Christmas. Did you know that? Because it was so hot this summer that the male geese were unable to perform. I've just been invited. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is not for transmission, but I've just no. been invited to oh, Christmas. Bit? And they said, where you will meet the witty Angus Deaton. <laughs> so there are two of you out there. <laughs> Um, this must be a, a, a reprinting question, because the British Rail timetable, that's the one that was so badly put together they had to produce a supplement that was then full of mistakes, and then there was another supplement to the supplement. Private Hyatt, I had to reprint a magazine once when they realised they'd forgotten to put any jokes in it. <laughs> and so Colin the World's never been reprinted. Not in hardback, anyway. <laughs> Roughly in the right area, but the wrong answer, I'm no, um, to say. So um, the wrong odd one out. The wrong one went out, the wrong reason, but apart from that, a perfect answer. <laughs> Private Eye has occasionally, through extreme 
bad luck, um, <laughs> had to withdraw and pulp the whole issue for mentioning various people. One was Cecil Parkinson, terrible slip. Um, another one was um, the chap I don't mention until the trial of his sons is over, obviously. <laughs> So you can't even you can't even say Robert Maxwell. You can't not allow to say Robert Maxwell. You can't, you can't say Robert Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> so I met that friend of mine, Maxwell Robert. <laughs> well, some say Maxwell Robert. Yeah, easily. Go on then. <laughs> I can say there's a fat thing that looks as though it's drowning. <laughs> But you can't say you can't say Robert Maxwell or Maxwell Robert or any anagram about Robert Maxwell. You can't do any of that. No, I think I'd rather not actually. <laughs> if I was you, yeah. Can you ask him some questions about Robert Maxwell. <laughs> Are you allowed to say Ian and Kevin Maxwell? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't think I'll bother. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny because years ago I went to court years ago. I can't say the word bag push. <laughs> I hate to seem irrelevant, but uh, the answer well, to the question. Oh, it's reprinting. <laughs> the right. Bruce Rail timetable, there are three of them, because they had to reprint three times, because they kept getting the, the time of when the yeah, train arrived wrong. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Which was fascinating. <laughs> Don't get to edit your bit, anyway. I think, yeah. No jokes in it. Um, <laughs> Wait till we get the private eye. <laughs> Touché. Touché? <laughs> Robert Maxwell, Robert Maxwell. <laughs> Uh, Ian's the one out. Well, I'm well, delighted to say that. that no one has still got the right answer. Um, and it's your timetable, the uh, one out. Yes, you can't go through all four of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've gone through three of them. It just seems a logical step. Uh, I'm sure that's what Robert Maxwell would have done. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Ian? Do you think he'd have done that? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the answer is that none of them have an appendix, uh, except for the British Rail timetable. <laughs> Um, well, when you, when you say it like that, I mean, what fools we've been. Yeah. <laughs> amazed that you didn't get it straight away. Uh, That's but amazing, because mm. that actually happened on this show. I was sitting literally here, and Mariella Frostup was sitting here, and I had this terrific pain at my side. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got appendicitis. <laughs> Open your waistcoat and give us a look. Have you got a nice little... No, Scott, I had keyhole surgery. It's absolutely brilliant. This bloke said to me, yeah, this is a centre of excellence and he put his finger up my bottom. <laughs> it was a difficult enough operation without trying to do it through a key. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, what's the size of the operating room, for God's sake? Oddly enough, uh, last week, uh, Mrs. Anthea Bailey, uh, owner of a pet canary, wrote in to say that during Ian's Jimmy Somerville impression, uh, she heard a fluttering noise and a thud and turned around to see that the bird had keeled over and died. Huh? I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Bailey. Not it just... won't happen again. <laughs> well, now it's dead, it won't, no. <laughs> Man with giant saucepan on his head walks past the wall that's got a hidden magnet in it. <laughs> Do you mean to say that Diana's given an interview? <laughs> <laughs> when did this happen? <laughs> there was a man called Major Blewett. Major Blewett, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Blewett. And that was Oliver Hoare, who she didn't make dirty phone calls to, apparently. And who did? Um, apparently it was some small boy. <laughs> I'm not saying he didn't believe every word of that interview. Uh, she said um, there were three of us in the marriage. Which shows that her maths hasn't changed much. <laughs> Hewitt, Paul, Gilby, Charles, Camilla. Uh, yes. anyway, is it any good? Ringo said it was brilliant. He said uh, it sounds just like them. So he's obviously, <laughs> obviously forgotten that he was in it. <laughs> I think he was saying that in the context of listening to George and Paul harmonising with John's voice while he was in the control booth having done his drums. 
So he said it sounds just like them was quite a plausible thing to say right. at the time to the person he was sitting next to. Right. <laughs> you see, so it's not actually him being thick or anything. No. It's like a plausible thing which you've taken out of context for yes. the benefit of a rather weak joke. No. <laughs> Can you do Ringo as well as George? Love to. Here we go. <laughs> um, I can do him singing, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, only your, uh, yeah, when you're, you're 16, help. you're oh, beautiful right. in your mind. Right, um, let's have it. <laughs> you're 16. You're beautiful. <laughs> and you're mine. <laughs> A bit too musically accurate to be Ringo, but... Um... It's musically horrible if you got it in your left ear. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Please, oh, uh... don't do that Diana look. <laughs> right. Seemed to Some work for her. Just Mm. Uh, What's well, got a head on one side the whole time? <laughs> Jumped That's... on by Will Carling. <laughs> Massaging is very relaxing. Have you ever been massaged? Go on then. <laughs> oh, um, this, uh... <laughs> is it Sarah Ferguson? <laughs> <laughs> so all these people have appeared as cinema in Blackpool. That's the answer. I can't now. believe he didn't get the points. How would anyone get that right? Nobody would. Well, they wouldn't. That's why we gave it to him. Yeah. <laughs> Teresa, your impossible question uh, is... Your impossible question? <laughs> Isn't he sweet? Um, he's gorgeous. <laughs> uh, these are they. Uh... I was trying to mend the gulf between us. No, there's no gulf. Oh, I see. It's a oh, chasm. <laughs> It's, um, it's about Something a pound. Something going bust. What's about a pound? The answer's about a pound. Oh, right, I thought you were talking about private eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh! That's got to be the first commercial Angus has ever done for sold free. For <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get a repeat performance. <laughs> <laughs> you might go out Saturday if you're lucky. <laughs> Well, just you and Teresa. No, Neil. <laughs> he's well up for you, I tell you that. Mm. Look at that look he's given you, look. He's told me. He's told me. His arm's gone, his arm's gone. That's always a good sign. He's told me he's 60. He's 60. There have been quite a lot of cases of police assault this year. Why are you looking at my captain when you say that? As though I might know. Is it, yeah, well, I'm just, I'm just thinking you work in the news, don't you? All oh, right. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, so I do. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> got you paper around. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I bet Major didn't say, button your lip, Soames. <laughs> what do you think he would have said then? Shut up, you fat idiot, you're losing us votes. <laughs> Another perfect and faultless impersonation. Um, are you allowed to say Guinness? Can we say Guinness? I think we just have, haven't Guinness, we? yeah. <laughs> and Angus was paid by the other lot. Are you? Who's the other lot? Did you make, you make pots of money out of all that, didn't you? Cold food. Food. You do as well, don't you? You make pots of money out of that. I used to, I don't do them anymore. Oh, yeah? Mm. Oh, your missus doing them there. Yeah, she does. We can send her out. You know, <laughs> she's one of the monkeys in the PG tips out <laughs> Well, we've all right. been there. Yeah. I've been a munch munch yogurt. Um, <laughs> that was just in my personal life. Um, <laughs> uh, next, my 34 watt by Cliff. Year diet. He's been on a diet since 1961 when Minnie Colwell said he was chubby in Coronation Street. <laughs> it's absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> have uh, you had a busy week work wise? Have you? <laughs> <laughs> the back there. No, He's got all these thing. piles of papers in his dressing room. It's well, crazy. you know, I just, you know, when I heard it was going to be a topical news quiz, I thought, well, where are they going to get the questions from? <laughs> Uh, also in the world of daytime TV, Richard and Judy, who coincidentally had both uh, Ian and Paul on their show last week, uh, have announced that uh, they're moving the programme down from Liverpool to London because top celebrities will not travel up from London to be interviewed. <laughs> yeah. 
Why do they think husband and wife teams have better sexual chemistry? God, remember when we had Paul's wife on the show? <laughs> what <Wada. laughs> Yes, I remember when I had Paul's wife on the show. <laughs> God, Angus, when you get hold of a joke, you don't let it go, do you? <laughs> County Court bailiff, I'm here from Scotland. Oh. Oh. Check for County Court. I have a warrant for repossession of this British land. Can you please vacate it at once? Oh, you wouldn't want that to happen, would you? Oh, dear goodness. Yes, sir. How, how'd you get a cow to balance like that? Years ago. <laughs> Sort is it of book deals? Books. They both said at the same time. Um, well, seeing it's our side's question. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Which you singularly failed to answer. <laughs> First time I've spoken, mister. Um, <laughs> Paul, uh, what were you going to say book about deals? Books? Well, you see, the uh, OJ Simpson. Oh, great. Your... <laughs> oh, no, lay in answer. No, you do, Paul. Oh, no. <laughs> no, please, I insist. Well, no, one no, of you do it, for God's to... sake. Oh, right. I'll do it then. Right. Hillary Clinton is the only one who hasn't uh, written a book. Has she written a book, Hillary Clinton? She does a newspaper column, but yeah. I think we're a few sort of a few homilies and pieties short of a book. As right. Yet. Let's yeah. say that she's the odd one out, then, and she hasn't recently written a book. I can't really give it to you because it's got nothing to do with books. Oh. <laughs> Robert Ma Robert Maxwell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I couldn't now, possibly I say. Really. <laughs> In a bid to help Paul draw level in the series and also to add that little bit of Christmas flavour, we welcome to the programme for the very first time a parrot. <laughs> Colin the parrot. <laughs> and then Sonny Sutcliffe, it was 600,000. And I was in the Guinness Book of Records for a year. <laughs> just under the world's fattest woman <laughs> for the biggest case, but then we were top. under the world's fattest woman. <laughs> I, think, I think he was trying to get out. <laughs> Is it true you're on the news this week? Yes, Angus. Did they ask you about why? Robert Maxwell or <laughs> Then I'd have been in the High Court, not yeah, outside it. That is true. Should jail be a place for leisure? I bet they are Cynthia Payne. <laughs> well, he's, he's answered. And, uh, well, it's not Cynthia Payne. I might give you another chance. Oh, thanks. Oh, uh, Cynthia Payne, Angus. <laughs> no, no, you've got it right. Here, here, mate. When, when you go <laughs> Cynthia Payne, he goes, I'll give you another chance. He doesn't do it again. <laughs> he really hasn't got the idea of this quiz at all. No, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Freddie Truman. Are you saying Freddie Truman? Yeah. yeah. No, that's not right either. Oh, did we not get the extra chance that you said? Yeah, go on, there you go. No, I'm not going. Cynthia Payne. Right. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, here. Yeah. It's, uh, it's Geoffrey Archer. Is the right answer. <laughs> uh, the Cambridge diet is based on a simple nutritional principle which was developed at Cambridge University. A lot of people want to go on it, but sadly, not everyone passes the rigorous med medical tests, and many have to end up uh, doing the Wolverhampton Technical College diet instead. <laughs> um, very, very snobbish joke, isn't it? Mm. I thought you were going to say Woodworth or something at the end there. Really rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Paul went to the Wolverhampton Technical College. If that's what you're referring to, Ian. No, he didn't get in there. <laughs> oh. I didn't understand it, Joe. You made so many mistakes in the television. No, yeah. <laughs> That's the standard of education at Oxford College or whatever it is you went to, we all know money back, I think. <laughs> Were you at Oxbridge College? Oxbridge College, Cambridge. Mm. <laughs> Where I went, yeah. we all wore top hats all day and ate mussels and oysters. <laughs> and uh, finally, what could uh, make Princess die happier? This is a misprint in Arab news. I only know this because it appeared in a well-known satirical magazine earlier this week. <laughs> what what magazine is that then, Ian? <laughs> Did I say it right? Yeah, that was lovely, thank you. <laughs> it appeared in Private Eye in the Christmas issue. Short bangs. What magazine is that, Longer bangs. Uh, Shorter bangs. Shorter bangs. It's a bizarre but correct answer. This is actually according to Argentinian hairdresser, Louis. Now, why did Ian get a point for that? Because I said the right answer. 
because you read it in my magazine. Well, <laughs> well, you couldn't remember what it was. <laughs> but it is slightly sad, Paul, given well, that really. you've already won and you're one ahead and it wouldn't make any difference anyway. Oh, I get mad with then. <laughs> I just say, was the producer's idea, Harry Thompson, to have this parrot? And he said, it'll be really funny. <laughs> they hadn't said a bloody word. <laughs> hello. And it's not going to say a bloody <laughs> word. Say hello. Right, that's it. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I leave you with news that the... Uh, <laughs> Late, but nonetheless appreciated. <laughs> um.